Hello, welcome to Today in Bad Theology. Today in Bad Theology, we look at the bad theology that lies inside one of our most favored stories as Americans, Thanksgiving Day. Let's get down to it here. Surely to goodness he's not going to go after Thanksgiving Day, is he? <laughs> We're here, so yeah. Um, what I want to do here is, is look at the way the Thanksgiving story we know that we were taught in school is bad theology, all right? So I'm, I'm not interested in like a bad Thanksgiving sermon you might have heard from somebody or, or is, can churches have Thanksgiving services? Is the idea of Thanksgiving in general bad? I don't, it's not where we're going. I want to look at the story that we as, as Americans tell ourselves and look at the theology that's in it, all right? And, and chiefly, I want to look at how that theology feeds what is called Christian nationalism in our country. The first thing to do is to define Christian nationalism. Now, this definition will be a little bit incomplete, but it's going to be the best we can do in the short space we have here. In the United States, Christian nationalism takes the form of the assumption that certain political beliefs are actually Christian doctrine. Uh, things like laissez-faire capitalism, uh, American exceptionalism, whatnot. Lack of access to abortion, homosexuality is bad, these sorts of things. It assumes that these political leanings and thoughts are, are actually Christian doctrine and that God will prosper America if America performs certain acts of piety. In a lot of ways, it's prosperity gospel that's related to it. If you simply do the following things, God will bless you. It's very dangerous. It's bad citizenship and it's bad theology. And there's a whole body of literature on what the Christian nationalist movement is doing. And we get into that in other videos, but that's that's the, the chief thing there. The idea that America is, is chosen by God to live out sort of these far-right American ways of doing things. Um, and that that's what, that's what God wants for us and that the state's job is to teach that theology. So I want to look at the Thanksgiving story that we know and look at how it feeds into this notion. There are problems with the Thanksgiving story we know, and we'll get to those. But I want to look at what that story itself is and analyze what it teaches us. So the Thanksgiving story, as we know it, is there were these people, the pilgrims, who wanted religious freedom and couldn't find it in Europe. And so they asked permission to come to the New World and received it. They came seeking religious freedom and they landed not where they intended to, but decided that was a good enough place. And, and their boat, the Mayflower, is now entered into lore as this, this epic journey that those people took on the boat. When they got to the United States, or what became the United States, they set up their colony, but they had some trouble and they weren't prepared for how to live in it uh, the, the way they needed to. And they were at odds with some of the Native Americans who were there, who didn't know what to do with these white folks who had come over. Until finally, one named Squanto helped them out and taught them how to plant crops in a way that the, the Natives did so that they would grow and so that they would have enough to eat. And eventually, a kind of accord was struck with the local Native Americans and so the first Thanksgiving was the festival of the harvest that was successful because the, Ameri the uh, pilgrims had done what the Native Americans had taught them how to do. And both groups of people got together and were able to enjoy this meal. And they were happy and there was unity and it was lovely. And so now every year we celebrate this meal that comes to us uh, from that original gathering and it is a very american thing it's not thanksgiving anywhere else in the world on thanksgiving day here in the u.s uh, other countries don't do things that way we have a whole set of traditions built around it whether it's the the president of the united states pardoning the turkey or the macy's thanksgiving day parade kicking off christmas 
that's a piece of our American story. And, and so we tell it and we teach it in school. I learned it in school. Every year that I was in school, it was taught to us. Okay, that's the story that we're all taught. Now, you know that much of this is wrong. Now, let's look at what the story teaches us though, okay? The story is, is couched as people seeking religious freedom, right? Religious freedom in this country led to success in this country, led to peace among the colonists and the locals. And they, they got along in this land of religious freedom. And they were blessed with an abundance because they got along in this land of religious freedom. And so we today are blessed with this abundance because we live in this land of religious freedom. And we are blessed with a great abundance, not only as we sit down at our tables to enjoy this meal with our families, but then we engage in the, the wild spending of, of secular Christmas, uh, purchasing gifts for the holiday that's only a month away. And, and clearly God has favored us because we have access to these things. Now, let's look at some of the things that we know are wrong with the story. Let's start with the obvious fact that the pilgrims are not seeking religious freedom, right? The pilgrims, the Puritans, want a very specific brand of Christianity, one that is pure, as the name suggests. They want a theocracy. Right? They want to live in a world where they don't have to deal with other people's religions but that's not exactly religious freedom. There's only going to be the one, theirs, and you have to follow it, right? And yeah, they couldn't find a home in Holland because the Dutch were like, yeah, we have religious freedom. We don't want a theocracy. Go try the British. Their, their, their king declared that he's the head of the church, so maybe they'll have a theocracy. And, and of course, I think you always have to remember the pilgrims are the people who the late Robin Williams, the comedian, said, these are the people who are too uptight for the British. Right? The British said, we are not going to have one of these here in, in Great Britain either. You can take it across the ocean to this weird land over there. So the, the pilgrims were coming to establish a theocracy, right? And, and they sought religious freedom, um, in freedom from having to deal with anybody who disagreed with them. That's not really religious freedom. That's just, that's, they were allowed to do what they wanted. No one could stop them, but they could force everybody else to do what they wanted, right? It, it's kind of the way, you know, we all had that friend, or, or maybe we were that friend at some time in our lives where we, where you sit, they would say things like, you know, I'm totally cool with people having whatever sexual orientation they want. You can be gay, you're free to be gay, just don't be gay around me. Of course, oh, well, that's, oh, I'll just change that. You know, no, what, what they meant was, I believe that you are free to do this as long as it doesn't affect me in any way. But the moment I feel the slightest bit uncomfortable because of what you are doing, whether you're doing it to me or not, I'm going to scream and cry. And that's not being okay with your friends being gay. <laughs> It's being okay with them not being your friends. It's basically saying is you aren't welcome here. You have to behave a certain way that I've approved of. That's the kind of freedom that the pilgrims were seeking. Freedom to be in their theocracy and to tell anybody who didn't want to follow it that they could just die. In fact, the colony of Rhode Island is begun when people fled Plymouth. Like, you guys are nuts. Can't keep up with you. But that's what so many of us Americans mean by religious freedom, isn't it? We mean the freedom to practice our brand of Christianity without having to deal with anybody else's. After all, that's, you know, we fight about putting nativity scenes on city property, and we think that's, that's such an innocuous thing. How can you be opposed to that? It's not really hurting anybody. Well, how would you feel if, if there was a Ramadan display set up or a Hanukkah display set up. Whatever religion you want to set up in this space, 
and that you were going to pay for it with taxpayer money. Would you be cool with that? Would you be okay with that, really? And maybe you would, but a lot of folks wouldn't. Because what they mean by religious freedom is freedom from having to deal with you and your beliefs, which are different from theirs. So already you've got this group of people trying to set up a theocracy who are lifted up as seeking religious freedom. And that skews the whole remaining thing, right? The whole rest of that narrative already exists as one saying that there is a specific correct way to have religious freedom. And it's this particular brand of Christianity, this Protestant Christianity, this puritanical Christianity. Let's get to the next obvious problem, how it deals with the Native Americans. Um, I live in the state of Indiana, and the state of Indiana is, is obviously named after the Indians, and the state of Indiana has no Indian reservations in it. We, we put their name on the state and made them all leave. All right? That's kind of how America has treated the natives. Right? And all the North American countries have struggled with this because of their colonial history, but this is ours and it's the one we're talking about. Here in the United States, um, Native Americans have been treated reprehensibly from the very beginning. The colonists took land that belonged to other people. They spread disease among those people. They fought with those people. And they continued to expand their world into the territory that belonged to those people, to the point that they fought a revolutionary war after the, the mothership in Great Britain said, you can't go beyond the Appalachian Mountains. Said, no, we want the whole continent to ourselves. We repeatedly made treaties with the Native Americans only to break them the moment we decided we wanted their stuff. And now, Native Americans basically exist as a permanent minority people in this country with reservations that are treated as nothing. We, we can build pipelines through them. We can pull armored vehicles up to them and threaten them. We can do whatever we feel like to these poor folks who we've done nothing but mistreat since we arrived. The Thanksgiving story makes it sound like peaceful coexistence is possible. What a wonderful sentiment. Peaceful coexistence between our people and their people is possible on our terms, right? Because we now have this religious freedom, which is the freedom to be puritanical Christians. And as long as they're okay with us taking their stuff and taking their food and killing them, we can coexist peacefully. By whitewashing the whole way that Anglos have treated Native Americans, the Thanksgiving story, takes out all that nastiness and says, you could get along with us if you would just deal with us being in charge. That's not peaceful coexistence. That, that's oppression. That's inequality. And it's certainly not religious freedom. It's our freedom to be whatever we want and to take whatever of your stuff we feel like. This then feeds into that whole Christian nationalist way of looking at things. You can be here as long as you play by our rules. You can pay your taxes and they don't have to go to any church except ours. You don't have to put up with any religion but the one that we tell you to. You don't have to follow any particular rules about how to conduct yourself as long as they're the ones that white bourgeois Christians have. That's not okay. And then, of course, there's the whole message about how we will prosper today because of that, right? By celebrating this feast and telling the story over and over again and saying it's about religious freedom that we all know is really Christianity and how other people and, and us could get along as long as those other people played by our rules or the dominant race's rules, the Thanksgiving story simply encodes the idea that America is going to be a white colonist's nation and the sooner you learn to play by those rules, the sooner we can get done hurting you and you can just play along with us. And by saying that is the course that we must follow to prosperity and suggests that the only reason America has the things that it has 
is because of this religion that we have. Now, America has the things it has for a number of reasons. Yes, a lot of people come here because religious freedom is a thing that, at least in theory, exists here. Not because of the pilgrims, but because it's enshrined in the Constitution, was put there by our founding fathers, most of whom weren't Christian. Or if they were Christian, they weren't very good at it. A lot of whom were atheists and wanted nothing to do with the state church. So yeah, people do come here for religious freedom, but it's not because of the pilgrims, it's because of other people. America has what it has in part because of the resources we have present. We're a pretty big country. And there's a lot of stuff here. You can find a lot of things that we need. And America has a lot of what it has simply by virtue of the fact that for the last, oh, 70 or so years, we've been the dominant country on earth, right? We have been the most recent empire and we still cling to that power today. That's not because God favors us. Every empire says God favors them, right? And then every empire falls. But the Thanksgiving story makes it sound like we have what we have not because of luck or because of natural resources that were present or because of any of the actual good decisions that we've made along the way but because we followed this very specific brand of Christianity. And so that's how we have things. And then putting that holiday where we do right before th the Christmas season, which of course we all know isn't Christmas. Christmas begins December 25th, not the day after Thanksgiving. But in America, it begins with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, if it hasn't started already. And it's a season of buying. It's a season of consuming ostentatiously. It's a season of celebrating the capitalist system that has succeeded to the extent that it has in this country. And so, yeah, this Thanksgiving day becomes a holiday that kicks off the season that celebrates the success of our economic system and undergirds it with this theological notion. That as long as we follow the rules of those religious dissidents who landed at Plymouth, we will continue to prosper. Now, this is not full-blown Christian nationalism in this story, all right? The, the, the Thanksgiving story does not say, ergo, you must have uh, teaching in your public schools that God favors laissez-faire capitalism, or you, the public schools are not going to teach that God favors America or that, that public schools are not going to teach overtly that, that being white is the only way to function in this country, right? The, the Thanksgiving story doesn't say all of those things, so it's, it's, it's not a full-blown Christian nationalist story. Rather, it serves as the sort of innocuous-sounding myth that undergirds it, right? It's the pretty version of the story. No one wants to teach their kids that some religious fanatics got thrown out of a couple European countries and came here to set up a creepy-ass theocracy and then murdered a whole bunch of people, and so now we're going to have dinner to celebrate it? How the hell do you explain that to your children, right? So no, the story we tell is way friendlier. But it encodes all the things we've mentioned, that religious freedom is really just a code for our brand of being Christian, that peaceful coexistence is really just a code for get out of the way of the white people. And it encodes the notion that our prosperity comes from following this way of thinking and doing things. And so no, Thanksgiving Day is not in and of itself a Christian nationalist holiday or a Christian nationalist story, but it sure lends itself to the narrative very well. My family's going to sit down to Thanksgiving dinner. We haven't yet decided what it's going to be, if it's going to be traditional or if it's going to be something else. We are, quite thankfully, off of work and school for a couple of days, and we intend to spend that time reconnecting. And many of you will go to Thanksgiving Day or Thanksgiving Eve worship services and hear Thanksgiving sermons and, and celebrate what you have to be thankful for in your lives. Those are all good things. I think it's very important that we give thanks for what we have in our lives. And as a Christian, I think it's very important that we thank God for the things we have in our lives. We need to be careful the stories we tell 
tell how God is good to us because God wants to be good to us, but also tell how a great deal of what we have comes from some fairly awful things that we either sign off on or have benefited from, or perhaps participate in. And we need to be very careful that the story we tell is not one that suggests that it is simply our way or the highway. That is a way that leads to Christian nationalism. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you have a happy whatever the next holiday is when you're watching this. Don't forget to subscribe, like. You can leave a comment in the video uh, in the comment section below. I try to respond to those as I can. You can also check us out on Facebook. Um, the, the link is in the video description uh, and in the channel description, uh, how to get to that group on Facebook. I'll see you guys later.